to all of my fellow brothers and sisters, peace be with you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a nomad of Deseret, and today we are going to continue our Light of the Restoration series where we talk about the claims made by Joseph Smith in comparison to the writings of the early Christian churches. Uh, but first, before we get into today's topic, if you are a subscriber, please feel free to click the notification bell, otherwise uh, YouTube may only send you videos that they think that you want rather than all the videos that I actually make. Also, if you are new here and you like the work that I am doing, please subscribe. And for everybody, please uh, like the video and leave a comment. Doing so helps my video get more engagement points, which makes it more likely for other people to see my video. And if you know anybody that this video would help, please feel free to share it with them. And you can also join me on uh, BitChute or YouTube. They don't uh, s generally censor my videos uh, like YouTube does. Now, uh, with that out of the way, uh, today's topic is we're going to talk about the destiny of mankind. And uh, in the previous video, we talked about that mankind uh, was, was spirits living with God first and that we came to this earth for one purpose, and this is the purpose that was that Joseph Smith restored to the earth, was that our purpose is to become like God. And um, if we are faithful to the Lord, uh, when we are resurrected, we will uh, continue in our progression towards becoming like God, and we will join the Lord in His work of creating other worlds and um, bringing forth children upon them. Now, the um, thanks to the, the Catholic Church, uh, modern Christians believe that it is impossible for us to become like God. And they, they call this idea the original, uh, the original lie. This is going back to Genesis chapter 3. Um, uh, in verse uh, 4 and 5, which says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But here's the problem with that understanding in that scripture. The only lie here that, um, that the serpent says is, Ye shall not surely die. Because if we go down uh, to uh, verse 22 of chapter 3, it says, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also the tree of life, and eat and live forever. And so uh, what that verse is saying is that the Lord is saying the man has become as one of us, become like God, as one of us, the Father and the Son. And so uh, we certainly have the capacity to become like God. And that's the purpose of, of, of us being in this life. And this was a teaching of the early Christian churches as well before the, the Catholic Church removed it as heresy. Now, first, we're going to look at a, a work called The First Book of Jehu. This is an extremely important Gnostic text that, un, that explains a whole bunch of, of uh, Gnostic Christian rituals. Uh, in, uh, we're going to read chapter 5. Uh, chapter 4 is talking about the uh, the the uh, uh, the apostles are asking Jesus questions about how to uh, bring uh, basically the, the the world up to God. and how to uh, become a and that's how we become a, a man of heaven instead of a man of the world. And so with that, go on, then uh, the Lord further explains the 
the destiny of those who become a man of heaven. He has emanated him being of this type. This is the true God. He will set him up in this type as head. He will be called Jehu. And so what this is saying is that uh, those the, the, the man of heaven will be put in a place where he can uh, 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 become a god, basically. And he is given the title True God, or Jehu. Uh, Jehu is, is basically the Greek form of Jehovah, a shortened form of it. And so this is talking about the, the, the man of heaven who becomes like a god or becomes a, a, a Jehu or a Jehovah. And it says, uh, Afterwards, my father will move him to bring forth other emanations so that they will fill these places. This is, this is his name according to the treasury, which are outside this. He'll be called by this name. That is to say, the true God. And so the, the, the man of heaven who becomes a Jehu, uh, the, the father, the Most High God, uh, ca uh, uh, causes him or allows him to, to emanate. To emanate in the Gnostic Christian thought means to bring forth um, other beings like him. So basically it's saying that um, that the the most high father uh, will uh, uh, will allow the, the 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 man who becomes like Jehu or or like God to to bring forth children in that place where he is put it says he will set him up in this type as head over the treasuries, which are outside this. Now, uh, the, in, in the Gnostic Christian thought, the word treasuries is referring to the places where the intelligences are, uh, which we discussed in the last video, where uh, these, are, these are existences that are ready to become spirits. And then the spirits become ready to gain mortal bodies and they're brought to an earth where they can be uh, resurrected and become more like God. And so the, uh, the man who becomes like God will be given control over a treasury, meaning he'll be given uh, these, these uh, existences that we call intelligences, and then he will... Uh, 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 bring forth children, the, the, these children into spirits. See, so these intelligences will become spirits through uh, their, their fatherhood. This is the type of the treasuries over which he will set him up as head, and this is the manner in which the treasuries are distributed, he being their head. This is the type in which he was before he was moved to bring forth emanations. Uh, furthermore, he will be called Jehu. He will be father of a multitude of emanations, and the multitude of emanations will come forth from him through the command of my father, and they themselves will be fathers of the treasuries. So again, this this man of heaven, who becomes like who becomes like God, who is given he will be called Jehu, or he'll be given the name Jehovah. And he will become a father of a multitude of emanations or spirit children, and a, and a whole multitude of emanations will come forth from him through the it says the command of my father. And so basically, um, heavenly father, the most high God, um, will allow and and uh, and and command that. That, that that person who has become like God um, to to bring forth children 
and they themselves will also become fathers over the treasuries. And so the spirit children that we have will also uh, emanate and create children and become fathers like we have become fathers. Uh, next I'm going to use a, a footnote for the next passage uh, because uh, I believe it's that translation more accurate than the translation in the current text. And it says, I will place a multitude as heads over them, and they will be called Jehu. The true God will be a father of all the Jehus, because he is an emanation of my father, whom the true God will emanate through the command of my father. He, will, who, he who will be head over them will move them. And so, see, this doesn't take away from, from God the Father being God, because... The, the the true God who is the is the father of all the Jews and he is all their head and they uh, they they emanate or create children through the will and the command of the father who is the true God and the head over all the Jews then it says and a multitude of emanations, will come forth from all the Jews through the command of my father when he moves them and they will fill all the treasuries and they will be called ranks of the treasuries of the light myriads upon myriads will come into existence from them and so all of the J all the people who become like Jews or Je who become Jehovah's uh, uh, will will emanate, meaning, again, bring forth uh, spirit children, and they will fill up the treasuries of light. Meaning that um, all, all these intelligences will become spirits fill, being filled up and become ready to go to an earth like we did. This now is the type in which the true God is placed when he is about to be set up as a head over the treasuries before he has brought forth emanations over the treasuries and before he has brought forth emanations because my father has not yet moved them to bring forth and to set up. This is his type which I have already set forth but this is his type when he will bring forth emanations. This is the type of the true God in the manner in which he is placed. Now it's referring to a picture. They, they, try, they, they draw these diagrams and I'll show them to you. And they're saying that this is like the the uh, the where they're placed and stuff. The, I I think the drawings are mostly meaningless, although there's this one symbol which I've talked about before, the three lines, um, which I actually think are real because the Book of Abraham also uses it. But these three lines, it says, means the three lines which are thus. They are the voices which he will give out when he is commanded. To sing praises to the Father so that he himself brings forth emanations and he also emanates. This is the type of what he is. And so basically it just, it just uh, keeps going on and on like that. Uh, I'm still going to keep reading though. But uh, basically it's saying these three lines that are in here, which we also find in the book of Abraham, um, they... Uh, represent the the voices which uh, the, the 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 people who have become like God um, uh, will will give will, will speak to sing praises to the Father when they are commanded to um, uh, bring forth emanations or spirit children. Uh, then it says uh, this. Moreover is the manner in which the true God is placed and he, as he is about to emanate emanations when he is moved by my father to bring forth emanations and to set them up as heads over the treasuries through the command of my father. A multitude come forth from them and they fill all the treasuries through the command of my father in order to become gods. The true God will be called Jehu, the father of all the Jehus. His name in the tongue of my father is this, and then it gives an untranslatable name. But when he is set up as head over all the treasuries, 
in order to emanate them, this now is this type, which I have finished setting forth. So, um, again, it's talking about that the God the Father, the Most High God, um, gives commands to to those who He has created to um, to bring forth children to Him, and uh, and and it says right here in order to become gods, and so. Um, that's right there is showing us that directly that we have the capacity to become like God and to become gods ourselves, to bring forth spirit children uh, like the Father has done. Uh, this next passage comes out of chapter 41 of the first book of Jehu, uh, which is uh, Jesus Christ basically giving a song prayer in which he told, tells the disciples to answer Amen three times to. And this is the, the, the word that, that uh, Jesus speaks, supposedly according to the first book of Jehu. I sing praise to thee, O thou unapproachable God, for thou thyself hast shone forth within thyself. Thou hast emanated an emanation from the beginning, so that thou shouldest distribute all the places. Thou didst call it Jehu, so that those in all the places should be called Jehu, so that they should be made rulers, or it also says kings, could also be read as kings over them all. Uh, what now is thy will, so that all these things should come into existence, O unappro unapproachable God? And so basically, uh, what this is, is, is showing us is that the term Jehu or Jehovah is actually means ruler or king. And so it says here that 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 God emanated or or created a spirit child and called it Jehu or Jehovah. And so this is God the Father give uh, uh, giving um, uh, creating a child a spirit child in the form of Jehovah who is Jesus Christ. And he did this so that a, a, a Jehovah could be placed in, in every place. I think the places are referring to possibly worlds, and so that there could be a Jehovah for every world. And um, that um, the, the peop and, the, uh, and, and so that the people in those places should also be called Jehu or Jehovah. So that they should be made rulers or kings over all of them. And so again, this is, is, is showing us that we have the capacity to become like God. Um, in the same chapter, chapter 41 of the first book of Jehu, uh, there is also this uh, phrase... It says, um, What now is thine own will, so that thou art approached in them, O unapproachable God, who art approached in this great uh, logos corresponding to mysteries of Jehu, thou greatest of all the fathers, O unapproachable God. So th this is, what this is showing is that there's that uh, this God who is the most high God, the... Uh, he is the greatest of all the fathers. And so this is showing that God does not consider it uh, wrong for others to become like him. Because he is always over them and they follow him. As God the Father increases, so too do all his children increase. And will forever increase because, because they being gods have no end. Now we're going to move to the Nag Hammadi Library. Um, this is a work called the Tripartite Tractate. We read a lot from this last time uh, because it talks about this, this, the, the pre-existence. Uh, it also talks about a little bit about becoming like God. Um, in one passage, 
It says all those who, well, it, let me let me stop right there. Uh, it says uh, this is part five of the tripartite tractate uh, under the term aeonic life. Uh, Aeonic life could also be read as eternal life, and in and uh, Joseph Smith taught us that eternal life is becoming like God. It says all those who came forth from him, who are the aeons of the aeons, being emanations and offspring of his procreative nature, they too in their procreative nature have given glory to the Father, as he was the cause of their establishment. This is what we said previously, namely that he creates the aeons as roots and springs and fathers, and that he is the one to whom they give glory. They have begotten, for he has knowledge and wisdom, and the totalities knew that it is from knowledge and wisdom that they have come forth. And so what this is saying is that all the eternal beings produce offspring, and by doing so, they give glory to the Father, who is the, f who is the Father of them all. And that those, those, those aeons give birth to other aeons, or eternal beings give birth to other eternal beings. And we are eternal beings, and uh, we have the capacity to become eternal beings and bring forth offspring like God does. Uh, in the same section of the tripartite tractate of the Nag Hammadi Library, it also says, All those who glorify the Father have their begetting eternally. They beget in the act of assisting one another, since the emanations are limitless and immeasurable, and since there is no envy on the part of the Father toward those who come forth from him in regard to their begetting something equal or some or similar to him, since he is the one who exists in the totalities, begetting and revealing himself, whomever he wishes, he makes into a father, of whom he in fact is father, and a god of whom he in fact is god, and he makes them the totalities whose entirety he is. So what this is trying to say is that um, the, the father causes all the other beings he emanated to emanate eternally and that whoever, whosoever he wishes he makes into a father and in, and in fact he is a, a father and a god now g jumping over to the gospel of Philip uh, it says here uh, the heavenly man has many more sons than the earthly man. If the sons of Adam are many, although they die, how much more the sons of the perfect man, they who do not die but are always begotten. <coughs> so what this, is, what this is showing is that there's, there's a heavenly man and there's an earthly man, and the heavenly man has far more children than the earthly man does. And so, in that is showing is that is is, is a, how we become like God, where when we become a heavenly man, uh, we produce far more children than we ever would on earth. And then uh, now we're going to a another work in the uh, in the Nag Hammadi Library called, called the Teachings of Sylvanus. Um, it says, uh, "The rational man is he who fears God. He who fears God does nothing insolent, and he who guards himself against doing anything insolent is one who keeps his guiding principle." Although he is a man who exists on earth, he makes himself like God. But he who makes himself like God is one who does nothing unworthy of God, according to the statement of Paul, who has become like Christ. And so here we see the idea 
of of that we can become like God. We become like God by doing what God would do, and that is doing nothing but good. And in so doing, we become like God. And this, I think, is one of the greatest statements ever. In, it's also in the teaching of Sylvanus in the Nag Hammadi Library. And uh, in fact, I, I turned it into a, um, a bookmark for my scriptures. It says, And yet the divine word is God, he who bears patiently with man always, he wished to produce humility in the exalted. He, Christ, who has exalted man, became like God, not in order that he might bring God down to man, but that man might become like God. And so, God wants us to become like him. Christ came here for the explicit pur purpose for us to become like him. And it's 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 very it's a it's it's a satanic origin to say that we who are the children of God cannot become like God. And it doesn't make s sense in the world. What does a seedling grow up to be? A mighty tree. What does a kitten grow up to be? A cat. What does a boy grow up to be? A man. What does a child of God grow up to be? A God. And Joseph Smith restored this idea that we become like God when we are faithful to Jesus Christ. And we will join God the Father in his purpose of bringing forth children into, into existence and helping them to become like God as well, like we are becoming like God. And the, the early Christian documents clearly show this. It is the Catholic Church that has removed this concept from the religion of Christ. And by so doing, the rest of the modern Christianity, which is an apostate Christianity, uh, has lost that concept as well. And I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.